Hi, good morning. My name's Andy Hemming. I look after the support team here at Text Local. Over the next 10 to 15 minutes, I'll be walking you through um, the survey tool and the data capture. I'm aware that the majority of people on today's webinar are already existing customers. Um, so on that basis, I am just going to take you straight into the functionality. Um, we'll be sharing some best practices on how you can create uh, a survey or a form um, and then give you some ideas on how you can best utilize that within an outbound text message. Um, so obviously, uh, everybody should be able to see my screen now. Um, one thing I would say for those that want to take part, we will be doing a live demonstration. So if you can have your handsets ready um, at, uh, at some point throughout the, the demonstration, I will be asking you to, uh, to text into a, to a number to uh, receive a data capture form. Okay, so the first screen you see in front of you, obviously, obviously as you're all aware, is just your home screen. It's just covering off some basic reporting stats over a 30-day window. Um, obviously, we've got our navigation bar across the middle. If we just hover over a header, it gives us a drop-down. So what we're going to do is we're going to jump straight into the, the survey uh, service. So if we hover over surveys, we're looking to create a new survey. We would give our survey a title and we would give it a descriptor. You can have multiple surveys. This is why it's important that obviously you give it a title relevant to help you identify between others. We now save those settings and it takes us through to the next screen. Now, obviously, as the service is named the survey tool, to start with, the system will automatically assume that you're, um, that you're looking to create a survey. So if I was to preview the page, normally with a survey, what would happen is you would have a, a title um, and some sort of descriptor for the customer so they uh, were aware of what they were doing and then they'd obviously hit a button. It would then lead on to the next page where you could then obviously start asking your relevant questions for you know, customer feedback and so on. Now, obviously, as this service doubles up as a data capture service, potentially with a form, you wouldn't necessarily have a title page. So dependent on the requirement, it's going to depend on what you do with this first page. So everything is managed down here. So if you were looking to use this as a survey feature, um, obviously um, you would need to give it a title. So on that basis, it's just a case of edit and then title. And again, would you like a welcome message in there? Um, potentially you would. So again, you can edit and you can put in your welcome message. Um, and then, of course, you would then want to go into the second page. So it's just a case of adding a page. Um, and then, obviously, again, you would get a blank canvas here um, where you'd then obviously start to build that out. Now, for today's example, I'm going to do the example based on a data capture form. Um, so what, on that basis, we don't need a title or a welcome message. So what we would do is we would remove the title. We would remove the welcome message. And we would change the start survey button to something like a, a submit or a finish. Now, if we preview the page as we go along, we can see now we've got a complete blank canvas. And we now need to start building our form out. So how do we do that? Well, ultimately, you add an item to a page. And you've now got all of your options. So to start with, um, just the form look aesthetically pleasing, you might want to put your company logo on there. It also makes the, uh, the form look that little bit more professional. So on that basis, you would click the image. You would give this a title. Now, this isn't actually the title of the question. Um, this is, obviously, as the reports are all exportable to a CSV, some questions can be longer than others. Now, obviously, from a, a, a data manipulation point of view, if you've got a keep scrolling up and down, left and right, to see which question equates to you know, what answer, um, it, you know, it can be a bit of a pain for the end user. So to make life easier, what you would do is you title what you're doing. And then obviously, that title will be what's exported to the CSV report. Um, so I'm just going to give that the title logo. You get the option as to where you want that to go on the page. And then as before, it comes down here now. This is where we now need to manage and essentially upload our logo. So we do that by going to Edit. We would then select an image. What that would then do is it would prompt our computer to load a file. We'd select the file from the desktop, and we'd import that data very quickly. Now, 
Back to our items page, we've now got our data capture form options to consider. So what can we actually put in there? We can put in long and short text entry boxes. We can put single and multiple choice drop downs. There's check boxes, radio buttons, star ratings, date and time pickers, hidden device locators, and hidden data fields. So we'll just select the short text entry box for the time being. The question of title, where would we like to order that? We would like that after the logo. We now add that item to the page. Once again, we then come down to here where we need, now need to manage and input the, the question. So if we edit, we then need to input what that question is. And if we now preview our page, we can see our form is now starting to build out. I'll just put a couple more examples in there for you. Um, This could be an example of when would you like a callback. So on here, that we now need to just list some multiple choice options, um, and we could just edit that. We could obviously put in the question. Um, you know, we'll just put you know, what is your favourite colour, and then this is obviously option one, option two. We would need to edit that, and then just change. The options and we now need to save. You can add multiple obviously this it predetermines two selections, but if you wanted to add another and another and another you absolutely can do. And then obviously it's just a case of inputting the information. Now the item value again this is important for exporting purposes. Again, it's not gonna when the report is exported, it's not gonna do your green, your red, your blues, because again, some answers could be longer than others, depending on the requirement. So it will actually export the numbers. So number one relates to red, number two relates to um, blue, number three is, is green, etc. So it's important that you put an item value in for any additional fields that you create. And again, once you've saved that, you can see if we we've now preview our page you can see our form now with the multiple choices included and then one more quick example um, if it was um, a situation where you were asking you know best time to call back and so on clearly you might want to put a date and time picker in there um, so this could just be title appointment where do you want that again and again, manage down here. Input our question. Preview the page. And as you can see, we've now got the option to input a, a date and a time. I think if we look at some working examples and on how you would use um, both of these services, so from a survey perspective and a data capture, um, I'll give you some live working examples from a data capture perspective. I know we've got a number of retailers on here at the moment, online retailers. Um, so on that basis, it could be um, you know a, a, an outbound message from a you know marketing perspective, raising awareness of a, a particular offer you've got on um, on a, a product, or you know a, you know if you were potentially a um, an estate agent, etc. You know it could be a, um, a a property or so on. And it's a case of please click to register interest. Um, the customer clicks the link, fills out the form relevant um, to sort of the questions that you've asked. That then comes back through to you as an inquiry, um, at which point you can then obviously call the customer at a specific date and time. Um, we do a lot of work with data capture forms with, within the education sector also. So I know a number of universities will um, be doing a, a number of recruitment drives across the summer months uh, to fill spaces for September. So um, in, in the past, uh, with Hertfordshire Uni, for instance, 
um, they used the data capture service um, to attract people to register for um, uh, upcoming um, open days. So it was click a link, the logo at the top, short entry box for name, short entry box, um, or sorry, should I say, multiple choice for course type and uh, date that they'd like to come along, as well as some other relevant details, hit the submit, that would then come back through to them and effectively book that person um, onto uh, that open day at that given time. So that's very much your data capture, just think forms. So as I say, register interest in products and services, request an appointment date or a callback date. Likewise, it could be registering for upcoming events. From a survey perspective, certainly within the food and drink industry, this is used quite prominently, sort of um, post-visit to the restaurant. It's a case of um, sending the, uh, the customer a text, you know, please rate our service. Um, for doing so, we might enter you into a, a prize draw for, uh, you know, a free meal, free bottle of wine, that type of thing. And ultimately, it's clicking the link and it's asking relevant questions to the dining experience, the ambience, the food, um, so on and so forth. So just think typical surveys. I think the beauty of this is, um, you know, I, I, in the past, you know, for organizations like Sky TV and so on, I know they're very key on getting feedback following a call with, a, with an agent. Um, the issue you've got there, though, is that ultimately it's a, it's a texting experience. So it's, you spoke to one of our agents today, please text, you know, ABC um, to this number, which you do, um, and then it would then send you a second, third, fourth, fifth, um, by which point, you know, it's very monogamous and boring and you tend to give up. Our survey tool is unlike that. It's very much just one outbound message with a link embedded into the text. The customer clicks the link and fills out the form all together on a nice professional, um, you know, piece of software through, through their handset. So that's ultimately sort of best practices on how you'd use both elements to the service. Um, what I'm now quickly going to do is take you through how to include that into a text message. Um, so for those that want to take part and receive the survey, um, if you could just take your handsets out um, and receive uh, on a new message, just put in 60777, that number again, 60777. Type in the keyword webinar, so that's W-E-B-I-N-A-R, that's W-E-B-I-N-A-R. You will get a bounce back text message which just says, you know, thanks for taking part in today's demonstration. The links embedded into that text message aren't um, the uh, data capture service. They're very much just showcasing a couple of other links and attachments that we've run through on previous webinars. But I'm getting you to do this just so I can get your number so I can send you that outbound text message. Okay, so naturally now you've built your data capture or your survey. So you want to go to send, send a text message. Any group that you've created will automatically appear down on the left hand side. By putting the dot inside the circle, that selects everybody in the group. Um, if you don't want to send to everybody in the group, you can just hit this expand option. It gives you a drop down. You can then select the relevant fields. We then refer to the right hand side of the screen um, where you now prepare your message. Again, something that you know we've gone through on previous webinars, such as understanding the basics. So I'm not going to go into too much depth here. Um, I'm also mindful that uh, most of the, the people on the call are existing customers as well. Um, you then clearly prepare your text message, and where appropriate within the message, it's just a case of clicking the survey icon, selecting the survey that you'd created, and then obviously that would be embedded into the message at that point. Obviously, I've created a predetermined message. I'll show you exactly now how that would drop in. As you can see, that's now dropped in in bitly link form, so a character save, and obviously it's got the tracking um, code that's embedded into that message. What I'm now going to do is obviously send that message to you, and in the next three to five seconds, you should notice you've received that message as I've prepared it with the clickable link directly through. Um, the message and then obviously when you open that page you will be able to see the form that we've created. That form does allow sort of audience participation so feel free to um, to fill that out if you wish and see how easy that would be through your smartphone. So that covers off the why um, and the how in terms of how you would include the message. Uh, I'm just going to quickly pull off um, some reports 
are on the survey now. So again, from an analytical point of view, clearly you want to pull the information. Um, so what you would actually then do is come into survey and live survey. You would then be able to see how many people had started the survey, how many people had completed it. Um, so therefore, obviously, for the ones that had started and not completed, um, you'd be able to pull the data and maybe send them a reminder text, for instance. If it was, uh, that's on a survey example, if it was more data capture, so it was, uh, you know, encouraging people to click a call to action to make a purchase, etc. Obviously, they were interested enough to click, but for whatever reason, they stopped. So maybe you want to, you can be a bit more strategic with those types of customers. Um, and uh, you know maybe send them a second text with a further offer on with the uh, with the data capture in bed again um, or maybe you make the, the, the judgment to call at that point it's not a cold call the customers already opted in and been warmed up through an outbound text message in any case um, so what you then do once you found the survey or the data capture results you're looking for is a simple case click in the pie chart option you then got a breakdown of your questions so what you can do is you can click in per question if you wanted to. That would then give you a, a pie chart and bar chart form um, results in terms of what questions had the most popular answers. Um, now, more often than not, to be honest, you'd probably just want to pull the data to an Excel spreadsheet so you can manipulate and follow up accordingly. It's not something I can do right now because obviously it's got client data on there for data protection. I can't share that. But if I was to export um, the these results, um, all of that information would be on there, question by question, and obviously the name and number of the person that filled that out. So a very useful report to, as I say, follow up and be proactive, or pull results to Im improve customer relations from following feedback. So that pretty much covers what I wanted to for today. Um, as I say, it was, today's session was literally just about understanding data capture and surveys in more depth. Hopefully, I've been able to showcase that to you. Um, I'm mindful that um, obviously it's quite difficult doing a, a generic webinar like this with multiple uh, representation from various sectors. So if you would like a, a specific session relevant to you and your business on how to best utilize this tool with some specific working examples, feel free to give me a call. My direct dial 01244 573 246. That number again 01244 573 246. Alternatively, feel free to email me uh, on andy.hemming, and that's H-E-M for mother, I-N-G, at textlocal.com, and it's text spelled T-E-X-T, local.com. So uh, feel free to, to drop me a line or give me a call as discussed. Um, pretty much at the end of the time, as promised, I'll get you about 20 minutes. Um, hope you enjoyed today's session. Hope everyone has a great weekend, and uh, look forward to catching up soon. Bye-bye.